Welcome to Intro to Java with an emphasis on AP Computer Science A with Tokyo EdTech. That is me. Our topic today is iteration, which means repeating sections of code. This is、uh, one of the most difficult concepts for beginners to really master, so it's important that you really take your time and make sure you understand how these things work. So, in this lesson, I'm going to go over for loops. Using for loops to count up, using for loops to count down, using for loops to traverse a string. You'll see what that means in a minute.、Um, how to count items. So let's say we can count the number of spaces in the string, for example. And I'll talk about that in as it regards to what I call the pattern.、And、this is like the most important pattern for coding,、uh, I think, in AP、uh, because it comes up over and over again in not only the multiple choice questions but especially the Free response questions. We'll talk about some other loop types:、uh, enhanced for loops, while loops, break and continue, and we'll talk about nested loops. So let's go ahead and get started with the code, which is, I'm sure, what you're here for. So counting up a for loop. So take the following code: so system dot out dot print ln, and let's say we're going to do zero. And as I like to say, I'm kind of lazy, so anytime I can copy and paste, I'm a happy guy. And we'll go up to five. So let's go ahead and fix this to five, four, three, two, and one. So if I go ahead and compile that and I run it, you can see obviously we get zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Which okay, we could we could code it that way, no big deal. But what if we wanted to print zero to a thousand or zero to a million? You can quickly see that. As convenient as copying and pasting is, it's not going to be that convenient in that case. So what we can do is we can create a loop instead. So the basic for loop is we do for int i doesn't have to be i.、Uh, i is commonly used、uh, in this context.、Uh, it's called the loop control variable. Now we're looking at our starting value, which is zero. So for i equals zero semicolon. And the condition. So, how when do we want to do this? So as long as i is less than six. Okay. Now I could have put less than or equal to five, but I strongly recommend getting used to using less than. You'll see why later. And then, what is the increment? How is i changing in the loop? So you can see here it's going plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. So we do i plus plus. Okay, so then in our loop, we do we can do now do system dot out dot print ln, and we're going to print i. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, save it, compile it, execute it, and we have the same result. So what happens here is that i starts at zero. Then we ask ourselves, is i less than six? Yes, it is. So then we execute this code block. So system out print ln i i is zero. We reach the end of the code block. We come back around. We increment i by one. I is now one. Is one less than six? Yes, it is. Execute the code block. Print one. Come back around. Increment two. Two is less than six. Three, four, five. Then we get to six. Is six less than six? No, of course it's not. The code block is not executed, and we go down to the next line after that code. That's it. Pretty easy peasy. So let's go ahead and try this again. Counting up by twos should be fairly straightforward. So instead of plus plus, we do i plus equals two. We go ahead and compile that, run it, and you'll see zero. Two and four. So we start at zero, we go to two, to four. Then we hit six, and since six is not less than six, the loop is over. We can do the same thing, counting down. Counting down is a little bit more interesting in a way.、Um, so thinking about that, counting down from five to zero. So our starting value is five. Our ending value is zero. But keep in mind we're counting down. So Greater than, I'm going to put negative one here, and we're counting down. So it's minus minus. So I'm going to compile that, execute it, and you'll see here we've got five, four, three, two, one, zero. 
Notice how I had to reverse the sign because we want this to keep executing while i is greater than negative one. Now again, I could have done greater than or equal to zero. It would have worked just as fine. Uh, you should, for the multiple choice questions, you should be familiar with both styles. But again, I personally think this is more consistently and easily used based on how we use the coding later. And you'll see here in example. Uh, so string traversal. So traversal means to go across. And so what string traversal means is to go through each letter or each character in a string one at a time. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little string here. And I'll say name equal, say the cure. That's my favorite, favorite band. Uh, I should say one of them at least. So same thing, for int i equals zero. Because we're starting at the zeroth letter, and this should be familiar from previous units. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so while i is less than, this is why I recommend less than, name.length. Now the length is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So while i is less than the length, we're going to go up by 1. Oops. And so what we want to do is we want to say uh, string letter, and I'll say character is probably more accurate, character equals name.substring. And if you remember, it's going to be i. So if, in this case, it would be 0, 1, and then, oops, then 1, 2, then 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5. So the pattern is i, i plus 1. And then just for now, we're just going to go ahead and print that out. Print ln character. So if I compile it and run it, and name that like cannot find simple name dot length because it is a method. So I need parentheses. So hopefully, maybe some of you caught that before I did. Okay. So you can see here. So we start out. I is zero. Is zero less than the length, which is eight? Yes, it is. So the character equals substring zero and one, which is t. So we print out that character, we come back around, i plus plus, i becomes one. So we pull out this character, so one, and then one plus one is two, that's gonna give us the h, we print the character, and then we go round and round and round until we reach the end of the string. Now this is the basic pattern. You're going to see this, uh, especially later when we get to arrays and array lists and 2D arrays, you're going to see this pattern over and over and over again. One of the things it lets us do, let's go ahead and just copy that. And here, uh, here's best song is pictures of you, for example. So same thing, if I run this now, Oops, it's already defined the matrix. Ah, so because string was already declared up here, I just go ahead and change it to, I don't need to declare it again. I can't declare it again. And so you can see how we're going through one at a time. What this lets us do is, so let's say, I'm gonna say count. Let's say count equals zero. So let's say I wanted to count the number of spaces in this string. So what I would do is instead of printing, you know, so if caret oops, dot equals quote space quote score plus plus, then after the loop system dot out dot print ln, there are quote plus count plus quote space spaces. So I'm gonna compile it, make sure it works before I explain it. System system I spelled system wrong. System alrighty. And let's compile that again. Count count oops I forgot to put int and oh my gosh. <laughs> Score. Alright. Uh, I guess it's a little early in the morning for me.
All right, there are seven spaces, thank God. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So again, we are iterating through. Okay, we are traversing the string. We're starting with T. We pull that out. Does T equal space? No, it doesn't. We go back around, H, E. We get to a space. Does space equal space? Yes, it does. We add one to the count. And we just keep going all the way to the end of the string. Okay, and then we report, in this case, we report the result. Uh, so this is what I call the pattern. Okay? You will see this pattern time and time and time again. If you can understand this pattern and how to use it effectively, you will do very, very well, uh, I think, in the AP. This, the, it comes up surprisingly often. So let me explain it real quick. We have in this case, a collection of characters. Later, we'll have collections of integers, collections of objects, and things like that. But for now, we have a collection of characters. They're combined into a string. But we can't just look at the string as a whole. We need to look at it piece by piece by piece. So we use this pattern. So for i, in this case, i is going to stand for index, although it doesn't have to be i, it could be q, nobody cares, uh, but stick with i. <laughs> so we start at 0, which is here. We go all the way to the length, basically minus 1. And then we want to look at every character, so it's i++. plus plus. So we start here, next character, next character. So this is the key part. We pull out, I just use the word, I say pull out, we take out, however you want to say it. We pull out the little piece of information that we need. In this case, it is one single character. Then we test it. You know, whatever we're doing with that particular character, we test it. So at this point, you can really just kind of forget all about this stuff. As long as you're going through all of the different parts of this collection, you're going to be fine. So in this case, we're looking for space. If it's a space, we add one to count. And then once the loop is completely over, we've checked through the entire string, oops, sorry, then we print out, in this case, print out the result. So I cannot overemphasize uh, how important this pattern is, because you will see it over and over and over again. Okay, okay. Um, enhanced for loops. Uh, there's something called an enhanced for loop. In AP, we can't really use it much here because there is a data type that it requires that we don't really use. Um, called the, I'm not sure it's called char or care, but uh, you know you might find it useful. I don't know. Um, so basically, what we got to do is and you'll see it later in the arrays unit. Um, so for care, uh, I'll say you know. Uh, character in the string so it was name but we have to do like two I think it's like two care array that's why I don't really talk about it much uh, we can say system dot out dot print uh, print ln character I think that'll work uh, let's try it first wow that's always a good sign and then you see it work there. So basically what this does, it says for each character in name. Now, we had to convert it to the care type or char type, whatever they call it, uh, using dot to uh, care array. Uh, that's, again, the AP doesn't require you to know this data type. Um, so I usually save this with my students at least till the arrays unit, uh, but I thought I'd mention here for those of you who are, who are interested, because not everybody is an AP computer science A student. So something to look out for, and you'll see it again later. Now, uh, there is another type of loop called a while loop, and everything that we can do with a for loop, we can do with a while loop. Sometimes while loops are easier to do, sometimes for loops are easier, depends on the situation. So just looking at our for loop, we have a starting value, condition, sorry, condition, and an increment. Your while loop will have the same thing. So I can say int i equals zero. Oops, i equals zero. While i is less than six. So the condition is the same. System.out.print ln i. 
And then I can go ahead and do I++. Same thing, it's just in a different, everything's just in a different spot. Okay, so let's go ahead and test that. And you can see zero, one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, we can do the same thing, counting down. So it's fairly easy to convert from a for loop to a while loop and vice versa. So again, we're gonna start at five, while i is greater than negative one, and our increment in that case is negative one. Compile, oops. Now, I got an error here because it's already declared here. You're probably wondering why, well, it didn't matter here, and something called scope, which I will get into, I think, in a, a later video. Um, so we do methods. So we'll basically, we can get rid of that. Redefine i, and there we go, five, four, three, two, one, zero. String conversion can be done with while loops. So again, int i equals zero, while i is less than, say, name.length, I'm gonna forget the parentheses this time. Now, and same thing, so string uh, character equals uh, name.substring, I comma I plus oops I plus one print L N character. Yeah, let's go ahead and try that. And yeah, I is already defined. Alrighty. Ooh, what did I do there? Okay. Now if you ever get stuck like this, I'm stuck in a loop here, it's running over and over again. You hit control Z and then See, this if this turns red, if you're in that part, just hit enter. Um, I forgot the iterator, I forgot the increment. It would just give me the first letter, because I never changed. Execute. Why is that not working? Okie uh, dokie. It has crashed. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close that for a second. And I'm going to go ahead and reopen it and compile it and run it. And now it's working. Okay. That does happen from time to time, especially when you get stuck in a loop. Um, you'll see that happen. Um, there are a couple more commands that work with loops. Uh, one is called break. Uh, so let me go up back up to here and pull this out. So counting. Uh, so break is used to end a loop. Break, so we say system out.println. I found a space at index plus i. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and compile that. I think we can get rid of that since it's already up top. Okay, now, now it's interesting. Because I was declared outside up here, now I can't use it inside, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so we'll just, for now, we'll just do that. Um, okay. Alrighty. So you see here, same thing. We're traversing the string. We're looking for a space. It says, I found a space at index three. So zero, one, two, three. Let me actually take out break there. Let me comment that out to show you what happens. So if I run this, so you can see here, it goes through and tells us the index of every single space, which is great um, if we need it. However, let's say we only need to know if there is, where is the first space at? So we find the first space and we want to be done. So break will break the current loop. So we hit three, we found a space, break, loop is done, we jump down to the next line. So, you know, basically this is like in a case where you just need to know if something exists. It doesn't matter how many or you, or you only want to find the first one. Uh, we don't want to keep searching, especially if you have something that's long, if you're doing like DNA analysis, you know, base pairs can be billions of characters long. Uh, let's say you find it early, you don't want to keep searching, speeds up your code. Uh, 
Um, there's also something called continuum, which we can use. Um, so I'll just use four uh, uh, i equals zero, and i is less than, we'll just say 20, doesn't matter, i plus plus. And so let's say we want to print the words, or print the numbers that are not divisible by three. Okay, so, so if i percent three uh, equals zero, continue. System dot out dot print l n i. So let's go ahead and compile it and run it. I'll show you what's going to happen here. Okay. So you see, oops, we've got one, two, three is divisible by three equally. So we don't want to print that. Four, five, six is also divisible. Seven, eight, nine, of course. 10, 11, 12 is missing. 13, 14, 15 is divisible by three. 16, 17, and 18 is divisible by three. Equ evenly divisible, I should say. Okay, so what continue does? So we start our loop, and then let's say we get the three. Three percent three is zero. We continue. What happens is, instead of going to here and then coming back around, it goes straight from here back to here. So continue. So whatever is after continue is not executed. So that's how that one works. So break ends the loop. Continue continues the loop, but skips whatever comes after it. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. And the final topic is a nested loop. Nested just means a loop inside of a loop. Okay, so for example, for uh, int y uh, equals, let's say y equals zero, y is less than 10, y plus plus. Let's see here, plus plus. And then we have for int x equals zero, x is less than 10, x plus plus. And then what we could do here is we could do, let's see, uh, system, dot out dot print ln uh, y plus space plus x. So if we compile that, we run it, and we're gonna get quite a lot of output here. So you see here, this is y, this is x. So we come down, y is zero. The inner loop repeats, y doesn't change, so we go all the way up to 9, it's less than 10. Then as soon as we get to 10, this loop ends, we come back around, and now y is 1. We come back into here, we do this 10 times, 0 through 9, boom, 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 all the way down to the end. And just as a quick rule of thumb, so if you think about this, this is going to execute 10 times, 0 to 9, this is going to execute 10 times 0 to 9. So since these are nested, this will print out how many times? 10 times 10. So this will print out 100 different times. So if I put like count equals 0, and I just did count plus plus system dot out print ln so count. And plus count, count. And run it, we should see 100 at the end. Okay. So that is a simple way to calculate how many times this will be executed. Okay. And that's something you, you'll probably see in a multiple choice question or two uh, in the AP. Alrighty, uh, I think that's it. I think we covered everything. Um, again, this doesn't cover every single topic in this unit. Uh, my book has, my ebook that we linked in the comments, uh, has some more details. There's a few more things on the AP as you go through the materials you'll see, but this covers, I think, most of the important stuff. Um, so we looked at for loops, how to count up, how to adjust the condition for counting down, string traversal, counting, and the pattern. Again, this is the core of, in my mind, AP Java. Um, this you just do it all the time, especially those FRQ questions. You'll you'll see this coming up time and time again. 
Uh, we looked briefly at enhanced for loops. We'll come back to those in a later unit. And then we also looked at while loops. While loops can be converted to for loops. For loops can be converted to while loops. Usually it's just a personal preference. There's some cases where a while loop makes more sense, uh, but for the AP, you don't really run into that too, too often. Um, then we looked at break and continue, a couple of useful commands that you may find handy here and there. And we talked about nested loops and calculating uh, execution, uh, the number of uh, times a certain line is executed based on the nesting of the for loops. So yeah, that is it. Thanks for watching.